The Drop Control is the most well-known mid-level enthusiast keyboard, and although it is a spectacular board, it does have some minor drawbacks to its otherwise stunning composition. In this video, I will give an overview of the board, mod the keyboard with different key switches, try out some different keycap profiles, and then give you a sound test of each setup, before and after. This keyboard features hot swap sockets, dual USB-C input, RGB, QMK support, PBT shine through keycaps, and custom switches with a form of fiber optics they call light pipes. These RGB friendly switches are only available on drop.com. The built-in RGB has many built-in lighting modes and the SMD LEDs are sunken below the PCB to increase switch compatibility. One feature that cheaper boards like the Royal Kludge RK68 often overlook. But one feature that the RK68 has that this PCB doesn't is 5-pin support. Furthermore, at the $200 price point, I can gripe that the lighting strip looks atrocious with poorly diffused light. The black finish is great, but attracts fingerprints. The board is well constructed and feels very sleek, but it doesn't come with a wrist rest. I also feel that at this price point, there should either be built-in macro support or support other than QMK that makes programming the keyboard a little easier. I don't want to lie, overall I am very impressed, but these facts beg to question. With boards that have more features, like the Everest Max with a detachable number pad and a media dock, and boards like the GMMK TKL that have many of the same features at less than half the price, why get this particular board? I have one answer. The one feature that the majority of competing boards don't have. The case is 100% solid aluminum, not just the top plate. This may not be the most important feature for most. And granted, if you prefer more features or a cheaper price, then get one of the other boards. But if you are looking for something that will last you a decade or more and look exactly the same as the day you bought it, look no further. A solid case will sound and feel different, solid and crisp, but this combination of solid case and the stiff switches attributed to the most annoying problem that I have ever had with a keyboard, switch ping. Because the other switches were sold out, this board originally shipped with 65 gram halo clears which had an unbearable amount of spring ping and a high actuation force. Here is what they sounded like. The harmonics from the case allowed for neighboring springs to resonate. I'll share with you a secret. The best way of eliminating switch ping isn't greasing your springs it is using softer springs. So I ordered some 45 gram gold plated springs to replace the stiff steel ones. And because I couldn't stand the constant sound of a tuning fork while I waited for the new ones to arrive, I swapped in some kale box browns while I waited. Lubing the box switches was a little annoying because the stems are oddly shaped and the top housings have integrated sliders that are hard to align when putting the switch back together. The stabilizers are not the usual design and I couldn't do the holy mod on them. So I clipped, band-aid modded, and lubed the plate mounted stabilizers and put them back into the board. When the gold plated 45 gram springs arrived, I began to lube, spring swap, and reassemble the Halo Clear switches. I am really happy with how much better the Halo Clears feel and sound. There is no more spring ping, more tactility, and an unrivaled smoothness now that they are lubed with Crytox 205 Grade Zero. Please use the link and the coupon code down below for 5% off at keyboardlube.com. With all that being said and done, take a listen to the before and after.
the bottom line is this. Do I suggest the drop control over the other keyboards? My answer is maybe. If you are looking for a solid keyboard that will stand the test of time, then I say without hesitation, buy this board. Undoubtedly, with a couple mods, this keyboard went through a remarkable transformation to become one of my favorite keyboards. I will continue to use it on my primary computer where I can mitigate macro support and dedicated media controls with my Stream Deck. But when I need a solution that is all in one, I will use my Everest Max. Do I feel that this keyboard can be improved? Yes. Despite the small gripes that I have with this keyboard, the overall construction, feel, and sound of it in the long run is unparalleled, and I can overlook many of the missing features the other boards have when I have ways around them. I currently am not sponsored, and every video that I make is 100% paid by me. Drop.com is a great website that allows for referrals, and if you liked this video and would like to support the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. And then also check out Drop.com using the link below. If you sign up for Drop and make a purchase, I will get discounts on my next purchase. Thanks guys. See you in the next one.